When God was giving talent, boys were just too late. So they try to put me down, but it makes me more ambitious. Success is sweet, but revenge is so delicious. Kids gonna hate. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Strider's back with another pregame stats breakdown. Starting off on the red team, we're going to have Katarina, Nautilus, Quinn, Annie, and Zyra versus the blue team, who has Draven, Trindamir, Janna, Oriana, and Lee Sin. Starting right off at the top lane, we're going to have a nice friendly match between Katarina and Trindamir. Now, Katarina mains mid while Trindamir mains top, so... I think Trindamir may have a little bit of an advantage, but uh, Katarina still is played top quite a few times. Uh, and it's also Voiboy who actually mains top, but uh, he just mains a lot of AP top, so it registers it as mid. Uh, either way, uh, Katarina's been played by this person 75 times, where Trindamir's been played by this person 283 times, which is a lot. Trindamir's also very overpowered right now, so I think I'm going to have to give... Uh, the advantage to Trindamir on this one, unfortunately, as much as I love Voiboy. Boy. If we go into that middle lane, we're going to have a nice match against or with Annie versus Oriana. Now, Annie and Oriana both made mid, so no real big advantage there. Annie's only been played by this person three times, where Oriana's only been played by this person twice. Uh, so, again, a lot of inexperience between the two, although it is Skara, and he picks up champions very quickly, and he's very talented. So I'm definitely going to have to give the advantage to him on this one. If we take a look at the junglers, we're going to have Nautilus versus Lee Sin. Nautilus and Lee Sin both main jungle, so no one's going to have a big advantage there. Uh, Nautilus has only been played by this person seven times, where Lee Sin has been played by this person 186 times, which is a boatload. Uh, and it's also Doom Trouble. He's an excellent, excellent Lee Sin player. Uh, so, of course, I'm going to have to give the advantage to him on this one. If we take a look at the bottom lane for 80 carries, we're going to have Quinn versus Draven. Uh, Quinn mains AD carry and so does Draven. Again, no real big advantage there. Uh, Quinn has been played by this person 32 times, where Draven has been played by this person 39 times. So no real big difference there. Uh, the overall win percentage of those players are in favor of Draven by about 3%, though. The only thing is that you have to keep in mind is that Quinn and Zyra duo queued together. So they're going to be familiar with each other, uh, most likely friends, possibly on Skype chat, which is going to give them a huge advantage just because the... If, increase of uh, communication that they're going to be able to produce uh, so as for the supports we're going to have Zyra versus Janna Zyra mains AD carry while Janna main support see this is a really tricky situation because anybody that main support is obviously very very talented at this level of play a diamond one very talented support player a lot of people say it's super easy it's not as easy as it looks um, it's a lot of waiting around, and you have about a fraction of a second to react to make that one play that you can make. Um, so it's very difficult. But Zyra's only been played by this person twice, where Janna has been played by this person 44 times. So I think I'm going to have to give the advantage to Janna in this one. But if you add up all the wins and losses between both teams, you'll see the red team has an average of 56.36% of winning where the blue team has a 57.53% chance of winning on average. Uh, so it looks like it's in favor of the blue team by about a percent. So let's go ahead and get in the game and see what happens. Hey, what's up everyone? Striders back with another episode of the Diamond League here with a lot of very talented people. Of course, we have Voiboy, Faxon, Skara, and Doom Trobo. Doom Trobo. Let's see, Corquez, uh, Side the King has been very good, and I, Kenny you. Or I kill you. Um, the other guys, uh, Conquan, Fui, and uh, Barrels, uh, I'm not too familiar with. So it's going to be hard to say whether they're going to be amazing or not amazing, <laughs> to say the least. But we'll, of course, see how it ends up going. I have not seen a Quinn in a super long time. I actually don't know if I have ever recorded a game with Quinn. So that'll be really interesting. Um, I don't know how well that's going to go because I don't even think I remember um, <laughs> most of her names or most of her spell names and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll see. We'll play, it, we'll play it by ear. We'll play it by ear. And there has been quite a lot of Trindamirs uh, just coming out of the woodwork lately. It's very surprising, but then again... Uh, AP Trindamir was very popular for a while, and then they nerfed the crap out of it. And now AD Trindamir has just been absolutely insane 
lately. He's been banned in almost every single situation. Um, I'm assuming that Annie might be support. She might be mid though. Okay, no, Zyra support, sorry. Yeah, Zyra support. So Annie will be mid and Katarina will be top. Uh, I don't know. Katarina vs. Lee Sin is a very interesting matchup in my opinion. Both those champions have pretty high mobility. Lee Sin of course is a little bit higher, uh, mainly because he doesn't rely on getting a kill or assist to get a reset. He just has so much mobility inherently. Oh my gosh, is Lee Sin going to get completely caught out of position here? Oh my god, that was so close. I want to see him get caught out. I want to see him get caught out. First blood. Nautilus is mining. Oh. Unfortunately, nothing happened. We tried for it. And he's going to get a little bit of damage onto Lee Sin, but it's not really going to be too much. It's just one simple uh, incinerate and a couple auto attacks. Nothing crazy. Um, although both teams have put a ward in this brush. I believe this is an explorer ward though, yeah, so it's not going to last very long. Uh, and then as well down here there is another explorer ward. I think I said explorer wand earlier. I don't remember. That was weird. I don't know why I said that. Uh, and I am not 100% sure. I'm not 100% sure if Trinomir is going to be going top or mid yet. Um, I don't know why I th originally thought Lee Sin was going top. Uh, typically, I, I don't know, it's been a while. I haven't seen him in the jungle too frequently. Uh, lately, anyway. Okay, so Oriana will be going mid against the Annie. And she does get stunned almost instantly. Lee Sin's going to have a really easy time doing quite a bit of ganking because there's not much mobility. Uh, between many members of the red team here. Ooh, nice snare coming out. And Quinn is going to do as much damage as she can. She's going to jump in and do quite a bit. Holy cow, that's, that's a lot more damage than you think she's going to pull off, but that the Volt is really, really nice. Oh, nice stand aside with auto attack coming out from Faxon on Draven. And beautiful first blood. And you don't see that too frequently. Trinomir vs. Katarina is almost a mirror match. They just spin around. Spin around with blades and stuff. You never know who's gonna kill who. Uh, Trinomir just gonna stand there. That was weird. I thought, yeah, I was gonna say, he was probably in range to auto attack. I'm kinda surprised he didn't, but now, oh, and he's completely cut out of position. But, oh, at the same time, oh, a beautiful hook coming out from Nautilus. Being able to pick that up and. At the same time, Oriana being able to pick up Annie in that mid lane with the help of the flash and the slows coming out from Lee Sin. Red buff is just so powerful. Uh, it makes it very, very easy. Uh, very easy to kill somebody or catch up to somebody when they're slowed constantly, especially this early on in the game when people don't really have that much movement speed. Uh, Oriana has her dissonance uh, so that she can actually move faster. But, wow, a nice snare coming out, but Janna is going to throw out the tornado just for defense. Doesn't actually end up hitting anybody, uh, but it's really nice for that defense. Uh, the thing I don't like about Draven, uh, that a lot of people don't really pay attention to, is the fact that his bleeds will aggro the tower. And the fact that people are bleeding for quite some time. Wow, Annie going real hard in the paint. Is she going to be going for it? The ignite come down, and Annie picks up the kill. She still goes down from the ignite on Scara, but it was a really nice trade. Uh, Annie was a little bit behind. She's ahead in CS and now only down by one kill. Uh, she has the Doran's Ring as well as those Boots of Speed. So super, it's going to help a lot. Nice flash over the wall as well as a hook followed by the Grasping Roots. And now Draven is trying to go real hard on Zyra. Zyra just doesn't care. She's throwing on the auto attacks. Janice can be able to get out free without any problems. So great job uh, from the red team just putting together that nice little gank. The flash, yeah, the flash hook from Nautilus was just insane. A lot of people have been doing that. They've been saving their flashes for aggressive plays. Flashing over the wall and getting a hook right away is not typically something you expect. Uh, so, yeah, that judge line is just way, way powerful. 
This seems to be quite a nice little bit of trade. Oh no, Zyra's completely stuck out of position. She's easily gonna go down. Yeah, that one auto attack. Great job by Lee Sin, and ooh, the safeguard to avoid her passive. And at this point, Quinn is going to be recalling. She just started, but Draven and Janet don't notice. They just know that she's been gone for a while. So, ooh, a nice hook coming out, stopping that recall, and now Trinmere's completely caught out of position, but he will have his... Ooh, is it gonna kill him? Yes, it will still kill him. Beautiful kill from the red buff on Nautilus. Nautilus is doing work this match already. 3-0 and 0. 19 CS. Doesn't have the most CS, but with those three kills, those boots and mobility, he's getting from lane to lane and just making his presence notice. He's just so freaking annoying. Uh, and that's exactly what you need to be as a jungler. You need to be annoying. If you're not annoying, if you're not constantly showing yourself in lane, especially when you're the champion that has the most amount of CC in the game, uh, you definitely need to be annoying. That's kind of your job. So he's basically just roaming around as much as possible. Uh, and Annie getting stuns off as much as possible as well onto Oriana, kind of preventing her from getting much CS and doing a little bit of harass while she's at it. Um, but Oriana's almost level 6, uh, so this could be a very dangerous situation for her to be in. Quinn is not actually going to go in for those auto attacks. Annie gets completely cut of position. Nice shockwave coming out from Orion. She's going to get completely destroyed. And yeah. <laughs> Lee Sin was just kind of waiting for her to pick up that kill. So really good job by Lee Sin. And another beautiful drudge line from Nautilus. Ends up picking up the kill. And now they're homing in onto Janna. Janna's not going to be able to flash for just a little bit. Now she gets snared. Again, not able to flash over that wall. Beautiful, beautiful coordination from the red team. That was actually really nice. You don't typically see that. And a huge ultimate coming out from Katarina. Doing a half. In this life, Lee Sin comes out from the back and she just shoots away. So beautiful play by Voiboy. I mean, he's definitely not a joke Katarina player. Uh, but it's going to be very difficult for her to prevent this tower dive. Since he is level 6 and it's going to be very easy for him to catch up to him. Should be able to slow. He also has the unending rage. Oh, that's depressing. And they will probably be able to pick up the kill. Oh, she misses the flash over the wall. Boy, boy. You're killing me, boy, boy. You're killing me. Why did you do that? He's so close. Yeah, if he would have flashed over that, that would have been a really easy kill. And probably would have got away with it, too. Uh, Leeson did not have his flash at the time. So, yeah, that could have been a very epic play. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, attack still, once again, coming out from Nautilus. Doing half of Leeson's HP. With almost no items still. He is level 6 now, so he's going to be looking for an epic, epic kill. So, a really nice gank from him is definitely going to help out. Yeah, Nautilus with red buff, that's even more CC. That's just, it's so ridiculous how much CC he has. Every single spell has CC. Uh, as well as his passive. So, uh, again, like I said, he is the number one champion as far as uh, crowd control goes. He can kite like a freaking monster. Which is always nice. Going real hard in the paint, knocking Annie back way back. She Annie's gonna end up flashing over the wall. And now, oh nice, nice ultimate coming out from Nautilus, being able to stop the chase onto Annie. And now at the bottom line, Jan is gonna try to disengage his fight, but she's actually going completely turn it on. And Draven does end up going down, but Quinn is so super low. And I don't know if Chan's gonna be able to get out of this. No, she does not. Beautiful play by Quinn and Zara at that bottom lane. They're just tearing it up at this point. Um, although Draven has a significantly, uh, yeah, just a significant lead in CS, uh, it could be very dangerous. But Quinn is pushing now, and he, Draven just respawned, so he will most likely miss out on a little bit of CC. Um, while Quinn is just down by about 13 at the 10 minute mark. Uh, so as far as gold goes right now, the, the blue team's only up by about 200 gold, which is not a lot. 
Oh, Katarina getting chased down, but she will be able to get away. Oh, nice slow coming out, but he's just gonna back off. He's just gonna spam that heal as much as he can, gonna build up his rage. And while Lee Sin doesn't actually go for a max range safeguard to the ward, and oh, a nice flash grasping roots coming out. Quinn of Valor's gonna go on to him, and oh, the shockwave actually does not land on anybody. But Quinn is going very dangerously low. Nautilus is still going after Lee Sin. He picks up the kill. And oh, unfortunately, Oriana gets a double kill on Quinn and the Zyra at the same time. Now Nautilus is on the run. Beautiful tornado coming out from Jaina. He is going to need the spider Nautilus. Oh, he misses it just barely. He's going to throw down the slow as well as the snare. And yeah, he is just, there's no way he's getting out of this at this point. It's going to take him a while. Ooh, a nice auto attack and slow. With the Ignite coming out from Trinomir, beautiful play. Completely catching Void Boy off guard. And wow, I can't believe Nautilus actually got out of there. All he needed was to wait a few seconds until his boots of mobility uh, actually kicked in. And then it was going to be very difficult for them to catch up to him. Uh, so once his stretch line came up, he was going to be able to spider Nautilus away. Ooh, Tibber stun. This is going to be a very dangerous situation. She will most likely have to. Oh, is she going to have to do it? One more. One more. One more auto attack. Just an auto attack. Oop. Oh, the shield. The command protect coming from Oriana just barely gets it. And now the boots of mobility should be kicking in. Oh, no. But the dissonance keeping her away. Beautiful play by Oriana. I can't believe Scar got away from that. Blue team, in the meantime, picks up the dragon. They knew Nautilus was chasing around Oriana. They're like, fine. Kill her. We'll just take dragon. Turns out. You can need a killer. So that was a perfect trade for the blue team. They're now up by almost 2,000 gold. Even kills 9 to 9. Uh, and everything's pretty much straight across the board. Uh, the only thing that is kind of worrisome is the fact that Nautilus is the one with the majority of the kills. More than half of the team's kills are strictly on Nautilus. And uh, yes, he is good, but he's not going to be a late game carry. Uh, it would be nice to have more of those kills on to Quinn or even Katarina for sure. Even Annie. Any one of those champions would be nicer to have it on. But he did get to level 6 pretty quickly and he made his early game presence 100% known. Um, so definitely going to be worried about him in the future. Ooh, a nice tornado knocking up one. Jana's trying to push them back with her ultimate. I can definitely see that happening. And yeah, she will throw out that ultimate. Constantly throwing that heal and a beautiful hook coming out from Nautilus. He's going to do a lot actually knocking up both of them once ultimate. But targeting Lee Sin and now Zara misses her passive. This could be a very dangerous situation. Quinn ends up going down as well. And this is a very dangerous situation. He is not targeting the right person. He's going after Draven. Draven has that lifesteal. He needs to go after Janna. Uh, he goes down. He targeted Draven a little bit too much when his team was not. I'm pretty sh confident that they could have picked up a triple kill there at the bottom. Or the red team, that is, could have picked up a triple kill if they had proper focus. But their coordination was a little off, so that's displaying. Ooh, wow, beautiful, beautiful shockwave coming out from Oriana, just barely picking up the tail end of that. Andy is now 1 4 and 0, while Oriana is 6 1 and 0, with about 20 more CS. Oh, sorry, 10 more CS can't count and yeah she's that's just insane lead right now they're now up by almost 5,000 at the 14 minute mark so within four minutes they went from a 200 gold lead to approximately 5,000 gold lead nice grasping roots coming up from side just stopping the recall kind of stalling it up as much as possible Draven will finally be able to recall while Trendemir takes down that top tower. So two towers go down at the same time. The red team now has zero outer towers. It's three towers to zero in favor of the blue team. And it's also 13 kills to 10. So a huge, huge advantage for this blue team now. They're up by 6,000 gold. That's just absolutely insane. Trinomir is doing as much as he can. He does have a little bit of gold. Those Berserker Greaves are definitely going to help with his attack speed, of course. Brawler's Greaves will increase the chance to crit. Uh, and that's going to be really nice for him because the more rage he gets, the
the more crit he gets as well. So it's, he's going to get a lot closer to that 100% crit. Ooh, nice spider knot action coming up from Nautilus. Uh, he's doing a great job this game, but uh, I'm still a little bit shocked. Ooh, a nice ultimate coming out. Is he going to be able to do anything else? No, he's just going to fight her out one versus one. It doesn't look like anything else is going to happen. Lee Sin's going to go directly onto Quinn. And Quinn is going to be able to disengage and Zyra throws down that ultimate. Shockwave actually bring him in and now the ultimate from Katarina completely obliterating Orianna. And Nautilus stays alive. Katarina has the reset on majority of her spells, just not her ultimate. Once again, Nautilus picking up that kill and I really don't think it was necessary. He had enough health to withstand it. Trinomere in the meantime is just split pushing like a freaking monster. Now, if Trinomere gets Ionic Spark, this is a very dangerous situation. Ooh, he leaves that top inner tower on the red team very, very low. The next wave of minions, if a whole wave of minions pushes it, he will most likely get that tower down. Oh, Trinomere now going completely behind Annie, and wow, he spins through that wall. Annie's just going to sit there and accept her fate. Trinomere gets a free kill. At this point, I don't know if Annie's just kind of feeding on purpose or what exactly is happening because she definitely saw him at that top lane and she saw him leave and she still pushed out, you know, they didn't have a tower there and she pushed out towards like him inside the river almost. A uh, very, very unsafe position. Ooh, a nice job by Boy Boy. Actually, shoot pulling to that ward after getting the auto attack, which basically resets uh, the invisibility timer, the time it takes for it to be invisible. So you can get those three auto attacks. If you auto attack and then Shunpo to it right after, you'll be able to get two more auto attacks on it before it dies. Uh, that's a really good trick. A lot of Katarina players don't know it, but it is excellent. Other than that, you really just need a very high amount of movement or attack speed to do it. A huge initiation coming out here and a beautiful ultimate from Nautilus knocking up three of them. But Janik with a great disengage doing quite a bit. And now the ultimate from Draven doing quite a bit. But the hook lands on a Draven followed by the Zyra snare and the knockup. And geez, Draven just comes completely out position. And that was a two for zero exchange in favor of the red team. Red team is starting to come back. They're only down by 5,000 gold now. Slowly but surely. And that is another tower that Trinomir just pushed. He would most likely just backdoor that top tower, and I think that's what he might be doing. He may go for the minions, but in my opinion, he just go and kill the top tower by himself. He doesn't even need minions there. It's just like two or three quick auto attacks. He is going to be going for those minions, which I think might be a little dangerous. I don't really know. Ooh, a nice snare coming out from... Zyra, and I don't know if the exhaust was necessary to be honest since they weren't going up for it. And yeah, Trinomir takes that top tower without any problems whatsoever. It's five towers to zero in favor of the blue team. They're doing a phenomenal job. Trinomir is definitely one of the main attributes uh, to that tower kill score. Oh, wow, down by six, almost 7,000 gold is going to be that red team. And this starts to get to a very critical point in the game because uh, it's only 19 minutes in at 7k down. That is a huge number. Uh, granted, it's not impossible to come back from it. It's just not likely. Ooh, a nice ultimate coming out right on the scar. And is he going to be able to get away? And he does not have her ultimate out. Quinn comes in. Yes, finishes it off. Beautiful play. Draven does get snared out, but it's like the red team is following. This is a very dangerous situation. Nautilus getting completely cut out. He does not have his ultimate, and they don't really want to fight this. But Annie does have her Tibbers, so she can flash Tibbers. She does not have her flash, but wow, Katarina does a ton of damage. And with the Ignite, picks it up, gets the reset for Katarina. Now Katarina's going directly on a Draven. Ooh, gets the speed buff from Sinister Steel. Ooh, oh, the flash on the hook. Beautiful play. Now it's almost had it. It was so close. So, so close. And this whole time, all Trinomir is doing is pushing these towers. And this is 
might be very easy for him to take this inhibitor tower. <laughs> he will have to recall since there's a lot of home guards coming out on the red team. Uh, he will be spinning back. Nautilus knows exactly where he's going since his red buff is up. And we could see nice engage here, but most likely he'll just get out. He'll just spinning slash. Oh no, he's going to go directly on the Nautilus. He does have that I don't expect. He's going to be able to push pretty easily. The ultimate out going down under Trinmere. Trinmere is in a very dangerous position. Katarina coming out doing as much damage as she can. He knows that he doesn't have any, any lifesteal whatsoever. So that's going to be a very easy pickup for her. Oh, sorry. He's a little bit from the Cutlass, but definitely not going to be enough. He doesn't have any CC either, so he can't take her out of the ultimate. There's just too many things. He got a little greedy. I think if I was him, I would have gone directly for the inhibitor tower. would have finished that off and then just recalled. I don't think the red buff was worth dying for. Uh, but I think an inhibitor tower might be. Definitely not red buff, though. The enemy red buff at that. So it gets a nice snare, it gets a little bit of damage on Elisa, and Elisa is not going to be able to do much. He's going to go directly onto Quinn and Valor, and Quinn just gets demolished. But now Zara is completely caught out of position, gets hooked and snared by Nautilus, and Nautilus is in a very dangerous, very dangerous situation. Zara getting a beautiful ultimate off. She's going to have to flash away. Katarina is in the mix now. She gets the reset, is able to pick it up. Is she going to get any more, though? That's the question. Her cooldowns are pretty high at this point. Oh, a nice ultimate from Nautilus. She's going to get that Bouncing Blade. Is it going to be enough? Oh. Just. Oh, it's not quite enough. And now, wow. That is a huge. Oh, a beautiful Shockwave. Trindamir doing so much work. He's going to be able to finish that up. Shut down her killing spree. And, oh, man. This is not good. Dissonance now going down on Andy. Andy has her shield up, but it's definitely not going to be enough. That is a double kill for Trindamir. He's going to spin through the wall. And now he's hunting down the Nautilus. And so many wards went down in that fight. It's ridiculous. There's a lot of ward safeguards and a lot of ward trimpos from. Uh, that's basically one on each team. So you will see random wards in random places. That's pretty much expected. Just so they can jump over walls and get to weird places that they normally wouldn't be able to. There's a couple reasons why you want to do that. And Wild Quinn is going to easily be able to pick up Valor at that point. But Trinomir is on her back. And I don't know if she's going to be able to 1v1 him, to be honest. Ooh, Janet just barely misses it, and Zyra misses her snare as well. Luckily, they had the backup, but that was really close. And the red team looks like they're going to get their first tower of the game. It's going to be the bottom tower. Beautiful play. Great job, great job. Lee Sin is now going hard in the paint. Are they going to be able to do anything? Oh my gosh, Trindamir almost obliterated that Annie in like three auto attacks. Get this spinning slash and one more auto attack. Doesn't even matter at this point. Quinn Valor is going directly onto it, but the undying rage. Is it going to be enough? No, it won't. Quinn picks up the easy kill. Red Team's turret has been destroyed. Oh man, Janna baited out that Katarina so hard, and now Voivoy may be in a very peculiar position. Yep, that's going to be a very, very dead Voivoy. <laughs> nice bait out by Janna, just kind of taunting her, uh, throwing down a ward in that brush just to possibly stop the recall if needed. But Oriana was coming and that was just, yeah, that sucks. Boy boy fell for it. What now, boy boy? What? Blue team now directly on the Baron, and this is where things start to get interesting. Yes, as if they haven't already. The blue team's up by 8,000 gold now, 24 minutes. Soon to be increased quite a bit. Yeah, they're almost up by. They're almost up by 10,000 gold now. Oh, Nautilus is going to get caught out, but he gets snared. Oh, Lee Sin isn't going to be able to catch up anymore. They did aggro the race. Beautiful play. 
It's always nice when you're running away if you can aggro creeps just to kind of block any potential skill shots that are coming after you. That's a really great way of doing it. So if they're, if, especially if you're an AD carry and you're running away from, I don't know, a Lee Sin or something, uh, it's really nice if you can just stop for a fraction of a second and auto attack a golem or a wolf or a wraith and then just kind of make sure that when that mob of minions follow you or the mob of monsters follow you, that you're directly in front of them so they you can't get hit by those skill shots so it's a nice little trick that some people use I don't think it's utilized as often as it probably should be I think it can be very useful uh, sometimes it's difficult and you'd rather do the damage to the person than attempt to get away uh, but at the same time once it gets to late game I think that's when it really really counts Oh, Valor comes out trying to get a little bit of movement speed. Is it going to be enough with the spinning slash coming out? And that is full rage, Trindamir. You are... Wow, he does actually back off from that. Nice job. The threat of Annie was apparently too high, even though she's only 174. She still does quite a bit of damage. Can CC him for a little bit, as well as ignite him. Two things that you do not want to have happen to you, this Trindamir. Ooh, Zyra now getting completely initiated on it. Wow! Almost obliterated completely. And like two auto attacks. Draven picks it up with a sniper. Let's see that again. Dun 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 dun. Oh, boop! Just the tip. Oh, that was awesome. Really good play by Draven. Almost did not quite get it. But they did get down the inhibitor tower, now they're going for the inhibitor. The red team is completely distracted uh, by the rest of the blue team that's down here. They were able to pick up Orianna, but killing Orianna for an inhibitor, 100% worth it. Oh, Katarina is now starting to catch out the least in this going to be a bad situation. But, oh man, Clint Mallard going directly on Draven. Is Draven going to be able to pick it up? Oh, Trinity with a spinning slash with one auto attack. Easily finishes it up, and that is going to be a really nice red buff. Followed by, oh, the Baron is it going to be enough? Yes, it will. The auto attacks with that Baron buff are just way too extreme for her to handle. She's been doing quite a bit of damage to Annie, but she's just kind of holding off as long as possible at this point. I don't know if there's anything the red team can do to really come back from this. They're down by 12,000 gold. Uh, it's looking very, very grim for them. They started to come back a, a few points in the game, but they're just not coordinated well enough. I just, I still think that Quinn and Valor is very underwhelming as far as damage is concerned. Draven now going hard in the paint onto Quinn and Valor. And she has all life still, which is nice. But it's not gonna be enough. Five members of the red team are at the bottom lane. And wow, nice shockwave only snagging in a couple members of the red team. But they're still doing a great job. Zyra knocks up two members with her strangle throws. Andy trying to run away. One more auto attack from Draven will be able to finish up. That is gonna be a double kill for Draven. That is a triple kill for Draven. Are they going to be able to do anything else after that? No, it does not look like it. Very unfortunate. And that is finally the surrender vote coming out from the red team. And that is a GG well played. That is for sure. Uh, it seemed very one-sided. And that's... Uh, I mean, that's a pretty big reason why Trindamir's mildly OP. The Blade of the Ruin King with that... Uh, Ionic Spark is so powerful. You spinning slash through a wall and you activate your Blade of the Ruined King and it's just like three auto attacks and they're dead. They're just gone. Uh, so it's really funny to watch. But uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. And of course, congratulations to the blue team, GG to the red team. And if you guys like my videos, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. Uh, as well as you recommending or requesting champions or players that you want to see. I'm also starting an interview series, so check that out. The first one was of a very high ELO LeBlanc player, uh, so totally check out my channel for that. It was one of my most recent uploads. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Peace.